The question today is, is it worth it? And what I'm talking about is the Galleon TS120 Standard Edition. I bought the TS120 a little over, I would say, a year ago. And since then, I have posted a video about my initial you know, thoughts on it and you know, my experience with it. And I even had, at one time, a opportunity or the opportunity to compare it to the special edition. And coincidentally, just as I was about to record this video, I found out that the standard edition is no longer available through the Galleon website. It's being discontinued. With that being said, everything I'm about to say can be applied to the special edition as well. There is nothing about my observations in this video that do not apply to the special edition as well as the standard edition. So I will be referring to the standard edition, but just know that the special edition is still available. But the standard edition is the one that I spent my money on. So what do I think about it now that I've lived with it for a year or a little over a year? Well. That's what we are going to find out today. Now, I'm not going to do a formal review here. I already did all of that. But for those of you who haven't heard of this amp or are new to the amp, I will point out some of the features that drew me to it. And one of those, one of the features that I really like is the fact that you can customize the amp to your liking. Not only can you do this by switching the class from A to class AB, which is extremely rare, by the way, you can further tweak the sound by selecting different sound modes. And you can also turn on the tone controls if you want just a, you know, a little bit more control over the treble and the bass in small increments. And being a tube amp, you can also tweak the sound signature by rolling the tubes. Now, tube rolling is fun. I enjoy doing it, but it's not for the faint of heart and it can be expensive. And I'm talking hundreds of dollars expensive, especially if something goes wrong and you have to replace one of those power output tubes. But another thing that I really do like speaking of those power output tubes is biasing them is extremely easy with the TS120. It doesn't auto bias on the fly like some amps do, nor do you need to manually do it with a screwdriver and meter. Here, it's as simple as the press of two buttons and just a few seconds of waiting. Now I've used every setting that the TS120 has to offer and every time that I've changed a setting, I've sat with it for, I would say a couple weeks to a few weeks to see if I really like it as opposed to some of the other settings. The one that I settled on, which I enjoy the most, is its most transparent setting, which is Class A with Sound Mode A. Ooh, something I need to tell you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, I have a small listening room and my wife, Mandy, spent a lot of time helping me tweak it to, to get the best sound possible and also a, a very cool ambiance. But the, the speakers that the TS120 has been paired with for 90% of the time it's been here are the KLH Model 5s. It's had no trouble driving the Model 5s. And I've had to tweak those speakers a few times to get the best sound, tweaking speaker placement, I mean. And this brings me to really what I love about the TS120, and that's the sound presentation. And I hate using, you know, the cliche audio file terms that most often get thrown out there when talking about sound and sound presentation. I mean, it's easy to say like, hey, it's too bright or the sound is a little bit muddy. But when you get to sound presentation, it, you're entering a vague and sometimes somewhat subjective area. It's almost like trying to describe, say, the color green to someone who has never seen the color green. You can point to something green and say, that's green right there. But if there's nothing around that's green, and again, if someone has never seen the color green and doesn't know what you're talking about, you can't really describe it and they can't really visualize it. Wine testers use terms like aroma or harmonious balance and bouquet to describe, you know, a particular wine's taste and flavor experience. Now, when audiophiles try to describe sound presentation, you'll hear terms like, you know, wide sound stage or holographic sound or three-dimensional sound. And then there's also, you know, clarity and detail. So I'm going to have to use that vocabulary, but I'll try to do it a little bit differently. And I was thinking about this last night while I was listening to a Metallica album and an old Rainbow record. I was trying to figure out how do I describe this soundstage or sound presentation I'm listening to. And I really want to focus on holographic because that's what the TS-120 delivers is holographic sound. 
And the really cool thing is about it is it's grown more and more holographic over time. So let me put it this way in trying to describe it. It's almost like if I was listening to a record of a live play instead of music, you know, strip away the music. Instead of music, you have actors on a stage. Now, if you close your eyes while listening you know, to that live recording, holographic sound is a lot like those actors on the stage not only coming from the speakers, but you can hear them moving about the stage, depending on where their voices are. They might be talking to each other. They might be whispering. They might be shouting from the very back of the stage. But if you close your eyes, you can place where that actor is at any moment during the presentation. A holographic soundstage in audio is just like that experience. It sounds like the band is playing right in front of you when you close your eyes. You can see where the band is. You might have the guitarist over to the left, the bass player over to the right, the drums dead center, but slightly back even behind the speakers where the speakers are sitting, and maybe the singer's a little bit front to center stage. It's a holographic image that you're presented with, and being three-dimensional, you can hear where those instruments and those artists are standing. Now, I've always felt this way with the TS-120. After much tweaking of speaker placement and you know, speaker towing and such, but that soundstage has really blossomed in the last few months, in the last couple months even. And I'm not saying that the TS-120 is the only tube amplifier or only amplifier that can provide that harmonic, holographic sound presentation, but listening to it, listening to the TS-120 is the first time that I actually got it, got it what that term means. Does that mean you should run out and buy one right now? Well, I bought this one and I probably would buy another one tomorrow. Unless I found another amp that sounds just as good or better than the sound presentation I'm getting out of this one. But there are a couple things I would change, and I could say that about any piece of equipment. And there's also a couple things that you need to know if you're considering the TS-120. Now, I've alluded to one of those things you need to know already. The TS-120 gets better over time, and that's a really cool thing. But you also have to be patient. If you're looking for, you know, immediate satisfaction in sound the minute you buy it, you might want to consider solid state or something else where the wait isn't as long to get there. But if you are patient and don't mind waiting, it delivers and you'll be very, very happy that you waited. And speaking of time, it also takes some time to warm up. Now, if I know I'll be listening to music, I like to turn it on three hours before. Now, you don't need to do it hours before like I do. 20 minutes is enough. You could just turn it on, let it sit for 20 minutes and, and start listening to music and you'll have great sound. But the longer it has to warm up, it does come into its own. Now, warming up is one thing, but this thing runs hot. And I'm not just saying, hey, this runs hot. It runs hot. I mean, it was 98 degrees in New Hampshire here this week, which is unusual for this time of year, but it was, it was, it was hot around here and it was hot in the listening room, even with air conditioner running in, in another room. But the amp itself almost had like a bubble around it that was a few degrees hotter than the rest of the room. It's so hot, in fact, that you almost can't even place your hand on the transformers when it's running in class A. Now, I can't imagine that that amount of heat is good on the internals of the amplifier, but I'm not an engineer and I don't have any other tube amps to compare it to. Now, I still don't care for the blue lights and you'll see black electrical tape over some of them, but yeah, that's minor. The biggest thing to be aware of is the cost. And I'm not just talking the cost of the amp. The, I think the amp was around $3,500 when I purchased it a little over a year ago. I'm talking about the cost of the tubes. The stock tubes, at least when I bought this, were PS Vane tubes, which are very good tubes. I mean, they're very detailed and transparent, but I like a slightly warmer sound and I like the highs to roll off a bit. And that's because of my years as I get older. Now, I could use the tone controls on, on the amplifier and, and I'm not averse to tone controls like a lot of audiophiles are. I think that they do have a place depending on the person and, and your liking. But I also think that employing the tone controls or turning on the tone controls and putting them in the signal path does affect that wide holographic stage, even, even a teeny bit. And if I can avoid doing that, all the much the better. So I focus on the tubes to help with that. Now, I've always used mullered tubes in my phono stage, and they're known for having a warm sound that accentuates the, the mid-range and tames the treble. 
No, I have some new old stock mullards that, that I bought a year or two ago. And I also have some new production mullards, which aren't really the same as the new old stock. They're they're not they're made in Russia and I think maybe the way they're made's a little bit different, but but they still do have at least a semblance of the sound that I'm going for with tubes. So I replaced the PS Vane KT eighty eights with new production mullards. After they broke in, the sound was even more to my liking. But that's the point I'm trying to make here. Those Mullard tubes cost about $400. That's nothing to sneeze at. And I paid it willingly then, but that's only because I wanted to. There will come a point in, in any tube amplifier's life where tubes will need to be replaced. And I'd love to say that's money well spent, but that's a lot of money, especially if you're not expecting to spend it. It's kind of like blowing the tire on your car. You need to replace the tire. You don't have a choice. You have to spend the money. It's the same with tubes. You will eventually need to replace a tube or two. So you might be saying, Rick, what's the bottom line here? Go back to that question you asked at the very beginning of the episode. Is it worth it? The cost of tubes aside and the fact that it gets extremely hot and almost causes you to sweat if you're standing next to it. All of that aside, and you don't have to roll tubes like I do. I just love to roll tubes, so I save money and do that. All of that aside, is it worth buying the TS120? Would I buy it again? Right now, as I sit here today, yes, I would. I enjoy what the TS120 brings to the table and the fact that it gets better over time. But I can't say I'll never buy another amp. I mean, that's all part of the journey. And as part of the journey I enjoy is new gear at some point. I'm happy with it right now. But it, again, this is a journey. If you're on a shorter journey and want a solid tube experience, one of those classic warm holographic sound experiences, the TS120 will not, I promise you, will not let you down. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Love to hear from you. And, you know, thank you for taking your time to watch this. And until next time, take care of yourself and enjoy your records. 